Suka hui kurva match. This is Ogdowski of WeAreChange.org, and apologies for my voice sounding twice as nasally as it usually does. I feel like I'm coming down with something after my power strip, but regardless of that, in this video, we are going to learn about the concept of Russia phobia. Now, personally speaking, as a journalist, I know other fellow journalists. It's a small world out there. You pretty much get to know everyone. And surprise, most mainstream media journalists I know have substance abuse problems. And of course, with that, you have aggression, which would explain the loss of the moral compass and moral reasoning, which has been in decline for most journalists. And the second popular symptom of substance abuse is paranoia, which would explain the fear mongering and Russia phobia that we're seeing from them. And also just, just utter complete nonsense that is usually promoted and advocated by them. Please welcome Desmond Naples, aka Desmond is amazing. Yeah, definitely looking right at you, Michael Strahan. So yeah, because we're not substance abusing, aggressive, paranoid, delusional journalists that protect pedophiles and other powerful abusers, we rely on your support to uh, sustain ourselves as an independent news organization. And one easy, quick way you could do that is by simply purchasing a piece of clothing that you could put on your body and also represent a message that could start very interesting conversations. And if you're interested in shirts that are pretty cool, great quality, great gift ideas, definitely check out our store that at the same time supports videos like this to be out there for you. And sincerely, thank you everyone for checking out our store. It means a lot to us, sincerely. Now back to the original topic of this video because it definitely seems like the Washington establishment has been wanting a war with Russia forever and those goals haven't changed. And we're seeing them ushered and puppeteered towards those goals by, of course, the mainstream media. Because usually the mainstream media is the loyal servicers of special powerful interests. The biggest one of all is of course, the military industrial complex, essentially pushing for something that would be a catastrophe. And there's no denying that it would be a catastrophe, but it does deserve some context and some rational thinking when it comes to the relationship between Russia and the United States. Already, the United States has many military installations surrounding Russia, and they are increasing their military capabilities around them, with also announcing combat military-ready F-35 stealth fighters that are ready to be flown by Poland. <laughs> The United States spends more on defense than the next seven countries combined below it, with Russia coming in usually around sixth place on the world stage when it comes to their, quote, defense spending. It's not really defense. It's really just, just war. Whenever you hear defense, it just understand it means military industrial complex spending. Russia even has the same GDP and the economy size of Italy, which again is only $2.1 trillion and is very insignificant to the GDP of the United States, which is usually around $17 trillion. And on the world stage, Russia, the land of vodka and, and polar bears, has geopolitically been standing against Western interests. There is no denying that especially in the Middle East, where they have aligned themselves with Iran, Syria, which has directly countered U.S. alliances with, of course, Israel and Saudi Arabia in the region. And Russia has even gone as far as to send their military ships to Syria to prevent a military strike and U.S. direct attack by Barack Obama on Syria, which was supposed to be a similar action that Obama and Hillary con Clinton conducted in Libya, which has utterly left it a devastated state filled with sectarian violence, slavery, and absolute break of rule of law. Ukraine has also been a very important clash point where there is still a conflict and a war breaking out in the east of Ukraine. So geopolitically worldwide, Russia definitely does stand against the global reaches and deranged goals of the neoconservatives in this country. There's no denying that. But but unless you're a deranged neoconservative, 
Russia really doesn't have that big of effect and it really isn't that big of a threat when you compare it to of course China. Now it's very interesting that on the mainstream media we've been hearing about Russia, 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 quote having nowhere to hide, fear mongering about Russian submarines when uh, there's been actually very little to insignificant coverage when it comes to China, a country that on the world stage has countered the United States in, in many different ways and represents a country that is becoming one that wants global hegemony and to become the dominant power in the world, which is obviously now occupied by the United States. But when you compare the media coverage to China and Russia, there's a very big distinction, especially with all the nonsense that we've been hearing from the last three years about quote Russia gate which as we've been calling it here has proved to be absolutely filled with lies and delusion but that hindsight still hasn't stopped the aggressive and paranoid alcohol abusing pill popping mainstream media that has been only focusing on Russia and we definitely saw the epitome of that last night during MSNBC's quote presidential democratic debate as they literally went after, without any shame, candidates that were anti-war, that were anti-U.S. interventionalism. Now, this is perfectly exemplified by Joy Reid right here in this clip that I still can't believe was aired on national television after the presidential debates. The challenge that Tulsi Gabbard is having is that you can feel that way about the Iraq war, as I definitely did, but, but also find it odd that the way she talks about regime change wars is exactly the same way that Russia talks about them. Right. Now, very interestingly, Russia also opposed the Iraq war, just like you did, Joy Reid. Talk about l lack of hindsight and lack of <laughs> lack of intelligence here. Let's keep it going. Language that feels straight out of kind of the Kremlin. Sure. It is okay. odd. Yeah. And that she went to, to see Bashar al-Assad and cannot take away from her interaction with him or her observation of him that he is a criminal yeah. who is not just hurting right. random people. He's hurting his own people. Yeah, right. Yeah, you know, the, the same could be said for Emmanuel Macron and, and the Yellow Vest. The same could be said for the U.S. regime backed in Iraq that is mowing down and killing and shooting protesters that the mainstream media is silent about. Do you want me to give you 20 other examples? Do you want to sit here all day? Because I could do that as well here, Miss Joy. But no, 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 no. Anti-war? Oh, you're definitely a Russian. The fact that she couldn't call him a war criminal right. is stunning. That you sad. Can't Very see sad. what he is. Holy cow, the human couch potato blurb here is actually Michael Moore, who just said, very sad, very sad. Yeah. Is, is, is also a weird Kremlin-y view that she has of the world that makes her an odd fit for a party yeah. of Democrats. Oh, you're, you're anti-war? You don't want U.S. interventionalism? That's a weird Kremlin view. You gotta be freaking kidding me! How much lower, how much more pathetic could they get? And of course, they're just going after Tulsi in many different ways, even officially tweeting on their account, which again, they're, they're again, you, people need to forget here, they're supposed to be journalists, they're supposed to be unbiased. These are candidates running for political office, they clearly have an agenda shunning and attacking one while promoting the establishment pro-war one because they're bought and sold by the military industrial complex. MSNBC is one of the most worst, egregious, profiters and pushers of war again these monsters do deserve to be called out because individuals who have worked with them have been ridiculed have been fired have been obscured for simply not wanting war for many years now this whole excuse for russia is just a whole nother excuse meant to convince you because of the trauma-based mind control that they've been pushing on you for the last three years that have been absolutely false and, and again what are they attacking uh tulsi for for, for meeting with, with Assad, for meeting with, with Donald Trump, where she, of course, discussed how to end conflicts, how to defeat radical Islamists, how to not support ISIS, al-Nusra, al-Qaeda in the region, how to not work with Wahhabists. And then last night, she was attacked by the mainstream media and by other candidates for doing that, which is absolutely insane. A part of the larger coverage was also Steve Schmidt on the show, who was also a strategist 
for Bush and Palin when Palin was running on the John McCain presidential campaign as VP. And this is the Democratic man on the so-called resistance network now speaking on, on what really represents the, the Democratic values, which MSNBC clearly highlights is their willingness to go to war with russia and then of course this delusion is spread by cnn that is taking talking points by mr yang here who's just going along with the failed rhetoric that trump is uh, supposedly putin's guy even though donald trump has allowed lethal weapons into ukraine aiding them with that has launched an attack in Syria, launched other attacks that have killed Russian mercenaries and created a very difficult situation for Russia in northern Syria that has created a dilemma for them. But again, doesn't matter for CNN, they're promoting the Yang Gang and their just utter delusion as exemplified by their news anchors or quote just drug addicts who are thinking that, that Russia is going to interfere like they did again that supposedly Russian interests are going to be pushed here which couldn't be further from the truth. Another CNN drug addict here saying that elected representatives who don't go along with their paranoia or quote Russian puppets as each of the democratic politicians are trying to prove themselves the loyalist to the quote deep state to the military industrial complex as they're trying to show who is the toughest on russia during these recent impeachment hearings so yeah kids don't do drugs drugs are bad drugs cause you not to think clearly and if you are a journalist you're supposed to think clearly which I don't think any of them are, especially with the evidence that we provided you in this video. If you think I'm wrong, if you have any counter evidence, if you want to debate me, I would love to do that. I usually answer comments within the first hour that a video is out. So please voice your grievances or even disagreements in the comment section below in this video, which of course I will definitely appreciate and engage with. So yeah, I blame this all on drugs. That's my take on it. Hope you appreciated it. If you did, share this video with your friends and family members. And because you guys do, because you guys help me push through the censorship that's been happening to this YouTube channel, this is why I try to end every single video by saying, love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on wearechange.org.